Hello, hello. Thank you so much for clicking on this episode. This is Dachu and you are listening to the Sip On It podcast. Today, our reading Reddit segment, we are going to be looking at my favorite thread, Petty Revenge. Friday night, I came home from work to find someone on our block was having a large party and someone decided they were entitled to park in my driveway. Keep in mind, my driveway is a single car with line with the retaining wall on both sides and a garage at the end. Essentially, impossible for a tow truck to come pull them out without property damage. Seeing this and the lack of street parking, I took this as a cue to park right behind them in my driveway. Now a few hours go by and an entitled parker is now knocking at my door demanding I move my car so she can leave. Seeing as they were demanding, I informed them that I had been drinking and would not move my car. The entitled parker then decides to call the police to get them to force me to move. When the police knocked on my door, I was sure to grab a beer from a fridge before I answered to the officer. I had informed them that after I got home, I was unwinding and had been drinking and was in no shape to drive. At this point, their hands were tied because they couldn't tow her car out. I'm in no shape to drive and I'm legally parked in my own driveway. I ended up telling the entitled parker that since it's a long weekend, I would be on a weekend long bender and they would come move my car after I go to work on Tuesday. If there is one thing that I cannot tolerate, it's public nuisance. She deserved that. Like it's 2023. Come on. You can't be so entitled. Like that there is a construction going on in front of our house and the mess they are causing in the road is just it annoys me so much. So the thing is we cannot really go tell them anything because they are technically not interrupting us in any way but it's still a public road. I, 35 male, have a younger brother, Tor. who had a complicated birth and had to stay a month in ICU and because of that my parents have always doted on him and almost denied him nothing even if it was detriment of my sister Abby and I my brother drinks in on the attention and has on more than one occasion made himself the center of attention at either my my sister's or a cousin's special event because of this Abby and I have a strained relationship with Todd and our parents Unfortunately, Todd met and fell in love with Lucy, who announced her own pregnancy at the baby shower my mom held for Abby. When I proposed to my wife Michelle, I just wanted to elope, but she really wanted her family to be there, so I I invited my family out of obligation. While out, my best man Jim noticed a receipt from a jewelry store slipped out of Todd's pocket. Jim confronted Todd about this, which led to an argument. Jim told me everything and I told Todd that he was no longer going to be a groomsman because I knew he was going to propose at my wedding. Todd cried to our parents and which led to a blowout. In my parents' eyes, since Todd never admitted that he was going to propose Lucy, I was unfairly judging him. I refused and brought up Todd's past behavior. My parents couldn't refute this and got Todd to agree to not try anything at my wedding. This wasn't enough to convince me to let him be a groomsman but I warned him that if as a guest he try anything I would make him regret it. Pass forward to the wedding and surprise surprise Todd walked over to Lucy and proposed to her during Michelle's father daughter dance and did it in a way so that everyone would notice. Cue my revenge. Jim and I had hired a woman to pretend to be Todd's side piece who cornered Todd and Lucy and claimed that she was pregnant with his baby. Todd denied this but she called his phone. I gave his number and messed with Todd's phone to incriminate him. It didn't look good. Lucy threw the ring back at Todd and left in tears. When Todd saw the smile on my face, he knew that it was me and I didn't respond to a single call or text from him or my parents until after my honeymoon. Lucy has thrown Todd's stuff out and has been denying access to their kid. Todd is furious and is demanding that I clear his name. I sent him a text that I have no idea what he was talking about as well as a screenshot of a bill for the wedding and gave a vague message demanding reimbursement for half of the wedding costs. Michelle knew the whole time what I was planning and gave me the green light after Todd ruined her moment with her dad. So I felt pretty good now but even Abby thinks I went too far. I was going to say that it was perfect proposing despite wanting not to do it is another level of attention seeking. 
It's always the family, you know, like always. Good for the poster. Todd doesn't deserve to be in your life. This is why they say, do not spoil your children. Telling that the girl was pregnant was a little bit too far, maybe. It could have been a playful prank. But but I but I truly believe that Todd des- deserved that. I mean, despite warning him not to do it, he did it. So, I think he deserved that. Yeah. I recently bought a house and have been having some work done before I move in. It was empty on the market for about 6 or 8 months before I bought it. One morning, I got a call from my contractor asking me about moving the cars in the driveway. And of course, I had no idea what he was talking about. I hadn't moved in yet. I left my job site and drove nearly half an hour to get there. As soon as I arrived, the people on the east side of me were walking towards the cars. I asked if they were their cars and they said yes. They told me that they had been parking there for a few months with permission from the owners. I informed them that I was a new owner and they can't park there any longer. We went back and forth and with the intention of being a good neighbor and trying to show some goodwill, I agreed to allow them to park there for a few more weeks until I moved in with the agreement that they would move them by 6 a.m. every morning. The rest of the week went by without any incident. The contractor called me about scheduling a walkthrough on Saturday and we set a time for early afternoon. When I arrived, there were four cars in the driveway and nowhere to park. I called them and asked them to move their vehicles, reminding them of their agreement. After 20 minutes, they finally came out and moved them. Speaking with them, they claimed to have misunderstood and thought out the agreement referred only to weekdays and not weekends. I corrected them and moved on. Sunday morning, I grabbed a trailer and loaded some furniture to take over and store in the garage. Once again, there were cars in the driveway. I called them and got VM. I texted and said they had until a tow truck could arrive to get them moved. No answer. I called a tow company. 45 minutes later, two tow trucks showed up, backed in and hooked up to the cars. All of a sudden, the neighbors were suddenly home. They ran out to stop their cars from being towed and it ended up costing them a little over $300 to get them on board. I called my contractor and asked if he knew someone who could put in a driveway gate and he did. I let the neighbors know that they could no longer use my driveway. On Wednesday, I get a call from the gate installer telling me that there are cars in the driveway. I called them and said the tow trucks on the way. They moved. The gate were installed and I went up by to pick up the opener that evening. The neighbor's husband came out to confront me and I opted to just call in the police department and deal with it legally. That Saturday, I went by to accept an outdoor furniture delivery and check on things when I noticed a towel beside the pool and the small kid's flotation device. My initial thought was that I just hadn't noticed it before so I wrote it off and threw them both in the trash. On Saturday, the movers arrived with everything and we began moving things. About 7pm, my daughter and I left to grab some dinner, arriving back at the house around 9.30pm. The neighbors were in my pool. They were hanging out and using my furniture. When I opened the door and began raising hell, they told the kids to go to the house and the children ran to a corner of our fence and just walked through. They had cut out the privacy fence so it could be removed and had been using the pool at their leisure for who knows how long. Again, I called the police and filed a complaint. The dad was arrested for trespassing and an outstanding warrant and the oldest boy for an outstanding warrant. I replaced the fence with a new one because they had destroyed the posts, runners and pickets by removing and reinstalling the panel. Small claims awarded me the total of $3,800. The following Monday morning, around 5 am, their cars were parked in the street when there's no street parking. So I made a phone call. They were gone when I left at 7 am. I haven't been paid yet, but I didn't notice a for rent sign in their yard this morning. So that's just as good. Good riddance. This week's post is full of public nuisance. I would have been so furious the first time itself. I know that it's pretty common in India, but it's still so bad. Seriously, like be respectful of private property, please. So. I don't know the full story, but I do know the gist of it. My grandma raised her kids with love. She practically spoiled them and she raised her grandkids too. Two of them, my uncle and my dad, became addicts. And the last, my aunt, became estranged. I've got tons of relatives, so I don't know if I've ever met her. If I don't, if I have, I don't remember her face or name. So let's call her Miss J. Miss J. 
Jay left without looking back and constantly asked my grandmother for money. She hardly repaid grandma, which was a big mistake. Because surprise surprise, my grandma was on top of every penny that she had. She was the best I've ever seen when it comes to handling funds. But 2 years ago, my grandma was diagnosed with cancer. She worked her butt off her whole life, was the strongest woman on the planet, and nobody got by without paying her their dues. Eventually, grandma dies. In her will, she gives money to grandpa, my dad, my uncle, me, and my sisters. Everyone in our family. But when it comes to Jay, she says, "You still owe me fourteen dollars." I do not know if she somehow debited Jay fourteen dollars in a will, or just put it in there as a little slap in the face. All Jay was worried about when grandma died was the money, and she got none of it. I can't be prouder to have a grandma that wouldn't leave the world without the last laugh. I guess I forgot to include it. Jay is also a drug addict. That's why she needed my grandmother's money constantly. My grandmother was a great woman and a great mother to me. She raised me well. Slay grandma. Now this is why grandmothers are awesome. Like imagine someone passed away and you owe them money. Like you can never give them back. I mean you can give it give it to their family but never to them directly. And that 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 kind of stays in their heart, you know? Seriously. Pay back your dues, guys. Like give it back. And with that, we are coming to the end of this episode. I will let you sit on it and see you in the next one. Bye.